Hi students, I think you don't like grammar so much. Somehow, grammar gives us the thought, oh, it's tough. But we have to realize at the same time, if you understand grammar, we can score a lot of marks. It's more like maths. So if you understand the topic, once the topic is clear in your mind, then you understand the rules, then you practice it, then you're going to be a winner. It's just like any game. Understand the rules, understand the game, practice and score. No practice, no scoring. So it's very important after we do any topic, you practice the exercise at home. Do it again and again. Even if you have done that, do it again. Try to understand. And once you have done it, you are the master of that topic. And you will be able to teach even others about the topic. But grammar becomes difficult when you just take it as, oh, it is this. Oh, these are tenses. Then you go home. You don't go through the topic again. You don't practice. Then you cannot master the topic. So today I am taking a topic which again, according to me, is common sense. According to me, a very practical topic which we require to use in our daily conversation. Well, let's see what we are going to present. The topic is modal auxiliaries. Sounds something new. Have you used the word modal any time? Mode, auxiliary, two words seem to be different. Okay, let me go to the word auxiliary. The word auxiliary means helper, helping. Auxiliaries are actually assistance. Any action when we do, when we do some work, I will do my work. But if help comes in, then work goes faster. And certain jobs are such. I can do that work better if there is someone to help me. Supposing I'm taking down some marks from one book to another, I shouldn't make a mistake. So I request someone, I do it. Or I request someone, could you please help me? Or I do it and I say, could you please let me check? You read out and I will check. So a helper make, makes the job easy and lessens the burden. So there are no mistakes. There are no mistakes. Auxiliaries, therefore, are, verb, are uh, helpers which are used in English grammatical structure. Modal comes from the word, I think you know from statistics, mean, median and mode. Mean is average, mode, mean, me, mean, median. Median is the midpoint of the scores and mode is the score that occurs the most number of times. So mode actually tells that there the most occurring score could be the tendency, could be the mood of that particular class. So here mood comes from the word mood, saying what is the mood of the verb? What is the mood that goes on? Is it strong? Is it weak? Is it happy? Is it sad? Something like that. The tendency. So that's why the word modal auxiliaries. Now we'll just see the sentence here. A Nadal plays tennis. At the same time, there's another sentence here. Nadal is playing tennis. Plays and is playing. Just observe. SRK Shahrukh Khan acts in movies. SRK Shahrukh Khan can act well. I think you do find a difference here. Rahul completes his homework. Rahul must complete his homework. Nigel goes to church. Nigel should go to church on Sunday. In the first sentence, you will notice the verb is just one word, place. And on the right side, you will see the verb is two, is playing. What should be in one word, place? Here, we have got two words, making it a complete verb, is playing. See the second one, SRK acts in movies. And here you find SRK can act well. Of course, unlike the first one, here there's a slight meaning. He acts in movies. And who acts in movies? Only if you can act well. Third, Rahul completes his homework. Of course, with one word, the message is conveyed, the work or the function. 
or the verb is mentioned. Rahul must complete his homework. I think if you observe carefully, you will find completes his homework and he must complete his homework has got two different tendencies. He is completing, he is complete, he completes. Must complete tells you something about compulsion there. He has got to do it, he should do it. Okay, last. Nigel goes to church. And next one, Nigel should go to church. So I am sure, my dear children, you have noticed here, plays becomes playing, acts becomes can act. It doesn't become, or rather the presentation is acts can act, completes, must complete, goes, should go. Okay? Now you will see here, here there is one verb. And here, you will see there are two verbs, should go and the second verb. Here it's the main verb, plays, acts, completes, goes. Every sentence has just one word as a verb and naturally that happens to be the main verb. Now you come to this side. The first one is, is playing, is number one, playing number two, making it two verbs. Second one, can act. So in the verb section there are two verbs, two words, first verb, second verb. Must complete, first and the second. Should go. What this goes is here should go to church on Sunday. So you've got two words. Now here if you see, we'll go back. First verb seems to be helping the second verb. You'll see here, helping verb, auxiliary, always before the main verb. Now you see here, the word plays is only one word, becoming two words here, is playing. If you observe, the main verb is about playing, and the word is supports that second verb. Second sentence, SRK can act well. The word act is the most important verb. And the helping verb is can. Tells you something about can he, can't he, should he. So can act. Now if you look at the third sentence, must complete. Main verb is complete. And you know what the main verb is from this sentence. Main verb is complete. Something else is added to it. So it assists the verb to convey a complete meaning. Must complete. And the fourth sentence, Nigel should go to church on Sunday. The main verb is go. There it is goes and it is go. And the word should conveys something. As you see there, helping verb is actually there. Is, can, must and should. Helping verb, main verb. It assists. And if you observe clearly, this helping verb comes before the main verb. All, always before the main verb. Right. Now we go to the next one. Auxiliary verbs. Auxiliaries can be divided into two types. Primary auxiliary, modal auxiliary. Primary auxiliary is, in this case, see, Salman Khan is the hero of wanted. There's only one verb here and the verb is is. So here the word is which was used as an auxiliary in the previous slide is playing is now used as a main verb. Salman Khan is acting in wanted. Is the hero of wanted. Salman Khan is acting in wanted. Here which is the verb? is and acting. Now you see, can be used as an auxiliary. In other words, I would like you to look at the verb is and is. In the first sentence, that is the only verb it is used. So it is called the main verb. Whereas in the second sentence, Salman Khan is acting. The main verb is about acting. But we can't say Salman Khan acting in wanted. The sentence sounds wrong and it is wrong. So we need an auxiliary to support the verb. And so the word is, which was the main verb in the previous sentence, is now used as an auxiliary in this second sentence. Now we come to the, this right hand side, modal auxiliary. Salman Khan can paint very well. If you observe here, the word can is used only as an auxiliary. 
Paint is the main verb and can is an auxiliary verb. Whereas on the opposite side you will see the word is is actually used as a main verb. We just see Salman Khan, the hero of wanted. None of these words are verbs. Only the word is is a verb. Here can paint. Paint verb can is auxiliary. Salman Khan can very well. Now what meaning does that sentence convey to you? Salman Khan can very well? No. So we can't use can as a main verb. Okay, now we come to, let's learn something more about primary auxiliaries. Primary auxiliaries, these are the basic features of primary auxiliaries. Primary auxiliaries can be used as main verbs. Main verb means only verb in the sentence. Primary auxiliaries can be used as auxiliaries too, as helping verbs. They can change according to the subject. In other words, supposing I say, I am, but she is, he is, you are, you are a girl, you are a boy, he is a boy, he is a girl. So with he and she, we say is, with you and we are children, are is the verb. So accordingly, primary auxiliary can change if the subject is first person, second person, third person, or if the subject is, as I said, singular or plural. Now, types of primary auxiliaries. We have got three basic verbs. To do, to have, to be. To do, to have, to be. To do, to have, to be. So under these primary auxiliaries, accordingly, these are the root verbs. To be, we have got is, am, are, was, were. To do, the auxiliaries are do, does, did. And to have, have, has, had. So these primary auxiliaries, please remember, can be used alone in a sentence as the main verb. They can be used also as auxiliary verbs in a sentence. And they change according to the people. Like when you come to do, we do. But he does, she does, I do, you do. Third, to have, have, has, had. But past tense, there is no much difference. If you take the present tense, I have, you have, but he has, she has, we have. Actually, there is a rule, third person, singular, present tense, the verb changes. We add an S in the verb. I repeat. Third person, singular, present tense. We add an S to the verb. So accordingly it changes. So these are the features of primary auxiliaries. But of course, today we are not learning primary auxiliaries. I think you already know about them and so we reminded you about it. Today our topic is actually modal auxiliaries. But let's see what it has got to do. Let's observe this. To be, to do, to have. We have given one example each. Is, is learning. They do, the boy doesn't play. Third, she had a very difficult task to do. She had eaten an early meal last night. So as you see here, first one main verb, second is auxiliary. Under to do, do is main verb, doesn't play is auxiliary. Under to have, had is main verb, had eaten is, had becomes an auxiliary. So which are the auxiliaries here? is in the first sentence. Sita is because learning is the main verb. The boy doesn't play at all. Doesn't is the auxiliary. Play is the main verb. She had eaten an early meal. Eaten is the main verb. Had becomes an auxiliary. All right. Now we go to modal auxiliaries. Now these are the features of modal auxiliaries. Modal auxiliaries can be used only as auxiliaries. They cannot be used as the main verb. As we gave in the previous sentence, Salman, Salman Khan can very well. Now can what we say? Can do, can act, can sing, can paint. It depends. Second point, they do not change according to the subject. Modal auxiliaries remain the same. For example, I say I can, you can, he can, she can, we can. So see, first person, second person, first person I, I can. Second person you, you can. Third person he, 
he can, she can. Plural, singular and plural. So we can. Did we change anything? No. Let's go back. What about is? I am. She is. You are. We are. They are. See, the is became are. But here modal auxiliaries do not change. Okay, one more point I can always tell you. You can check if it's a modal auxiliary or not by adding ing to that modal auxiliary. Supposing you take the word can. C-A-N-I-N-G. Is there a word like that? Of course, caning is there. Take another word, shall. Can I say shalling? Take the word will, willing, we do say with a different meaning. But would, wouldn't, may, mayn't, might, mighting, we never say that. So when you get confused to find out, finding out whether it's primary or modal, or when you're asked to pinpoint out or pick out a modal auxiliary, try putting ing with it. And see, do we ever use a word like that? No. So, this is another way, which of course we have not mentioned here, but please remember that. Let's go through types of modal auxiliaries. These are the different types. It's interesting. Would you like to learn something by our children? You can. You can. Just see. Can, could, will, would, shall, should, may, might, must, used to, ought to, need, dare. How many do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Exactly one more than a dozen. Number 13. These are modal auxiliaries. But there's one point to be remembered. Need and dare are used as modal auxiliaries in the negative and interrogative form. I'll come to that later. Can, could, will, would, shall, should, may, might. Maybe you can practice this on your own. Can, could, will, would, shall, should, may, might. Repeat it, keep on repeating. Automatically you'll get it. Can, could, will, would, shall, should, may, might. Must, used to, ought to, need, dare. Must, used to, ought to, need, dare. Practice it when you go walking home with your friends, when you've got nothing to talk about, or when you're talking too much. Just bring this and see that you get them. There are only 13, 13 modal auxiliaries. Can, could, will, would, shall, should, may, might. These are pairs. After leaving out those eight pairs, we have got must. And with used and ought, we have to put that too. Only if it is used to, ought to, it becomes modal auxiliaries. And need and dare are actually, like you may say, needing, daring. So by itself, they are not modal auxiliaries. By itself, they are verbs. But only if you use it in the negative sense. You needn't come. You dare not come. You needn't say that. Say is the main verb. Come is the main verb. Daren't. Dare not do it. Daren't do it. So, do is the main verb. Dare is the modal auxiliary. So, this is the way we check it. And of course, sometimes in interrogative forms, which we will be watching just now in different forms of sentences. I hope this is clear, children. 13 auxiliaries, and I'm going to introduce them to you with all the details. These are the modal auxiliaries. We begin with, you see this here, I dash cook food. Now I can say I can cook food, I could cook food, I may cook food, I might cook food. You remember those 13, I shall cook food, I should cook food. Then the 13 follow. But each one is used in a different way. Now I can cook food shows your ability. Whereas if you say, I could cook food, refers to your past ability. Earlier, I could cook food. So if you see here, depending on the modal auxiliary, the meaning of the sentence changes. So if you say, as I said, I can cook food, I could cook food, come to I may cook food. Now this refers to, you're coming home, I may cook food for you, possibility. Next, might. I might cook food. Remote possibility. Possibility is immediate. Might refers to far away possibility. You know, remote, far away connection, this way. Okay, now we come to will. I will cook food. This refers to, oh, I am determined. I will cook food today for you. Next, I would cook food refers actually to past habitual action. 
I'll refer to it when we get to cross another word, used to. I used to cook food. I would cook food. When I was in the 8th standard, I would cook food sometimes. So it refers to that meaning. Now, I shall cook food. This shows here future. In when I grow big, I shall cook food. Maybe next week, I shall cook food. So it refers to future. And then I should cook food. Now see the word should here. Should is not future. Should here refers to compulsion. I should cook food, Papi. I am so lazy these days. I should cook food. Or my mom is not well. I should cook food. So it's a kind of you are advising someone. You are a girl. You should cook food. Or you have got lots of time. You should cook food. So this changes. Now we have got must. Of course, should and must almost similar in sound but meaning is must offers more of compulsion should is more of advice i must cook food mom is not well i have no option i must cook food or guests are coming i have no option i can't get food from out i must cook food so compulsion now we look at this i ought to cook food with ought definitely with this modal auxiliary to always follows so see here, obligation. What is obligation? Compulsion and obligation, what is the difference? Compulsion says you don't have choice. Compulsion says I have got to do it. I can't run away from it. But obligation, I mean uh, along with that one more, if you don't do it, you will have some kind of after effect, some kind of bad result, some kind of punishment. If you don't do that, compulsion. But without two, it is more of an obligation. You know, it comes from the heart. Obligation comes from the heart. You give a rule to yourself. Oh, I ought to cook. I haven't been cooking at all. Every day somebody else has been cooking. I ought to cook food. A kind of obligation, a kind of a kind of a duty sort of, you have towards the people you love. Right. Now we go to the next one. I need not cook food. As I said earlier, need not cannot be used by itself. The word need, only if it is negative, it is considered as what? It is considered as a modal auxiliary. Let's see, I need not cook food refers to, oh, mummy has cooked food today, thank God, I need not cook food. We are eating out today, or there's a wedding today, thank God, I need not cook food. Okay, next, I dare not cook food. Now, now, what does this imply? Last time I cooked food, it did not turn out well. People didn't like it. They didn't eat. So you say, I dare not cook food, Baba. Means you don't have the courage to cook. People may not like what I cook. I dare not cook food. Just see, children, I, three words, I cook food. But every modal auxiliary we used brought about a change in the sentence, change in meaning. In other words, I can say, it changed the mood of the verb, word, and the verb cook. Can cook, could cook, may cook, might cook. That is why these auxiliaries are called modal auxiliaries. Note the pronunciation, modal auxiliaries. Not model auxiliaries, not modal auxiliaries. It's ex actually coming to the word, adjective of mood, modal auxiliaries. Right. Now, I'm sure you have understood what modal auxiliaries are. Now our problem is, what kind of questions can come in the board exam? These are the questions. They can give you a sentence and they'll say, pick out or identify the auxiliary and state its function. Of course, they won't ask you about primary auxiliaries. They may ask you, but so far it doesn't come in the, uh, it hasn't come in the board exam. But let's take it as modal auxiliary, identify the auxiliary, state its function. Second one, state the function of the underlined auxiliary. Third, rewrite the sentence using the appropriate auxiliary. Fourth, replace the underlined words by an auxiliary. Now let's go through this. Just look at this. First function, identify the auxiliary refers to sentences given. You must be able to understand which is the modal auxiliary here and to remember the hint I gave you. Can I add ing to that word? If you cannot, then it is not a, if you cannot add, then it is a modal auxiliary. 
So therefore, auxiliary state its function. What is the function? Now just now, when we put that list together, we told you obligation, ability, possibility, compulsion. These are the functions of that modal auxiliary. Second, you just write now, I can, will give you examples. State the function of the underlined auxiliary comes to the same, but the question will be, under, auxiliary will be underlined in the sentence, and you only have to write what is the function of that underlined auxiliary. So in a sentence, can will be underlined. What is the function? Because each modal auxiliary, the word can, has got two or three functions, which we will be showing you just now. Third, rewrite the sentence using the appropriate auxiliary. That will be a blank will be left, and you will be asked to put a suitable auxiliary. What do you do in that case? Try to understand the meaning of the sentence. Something to do with exam, it has to do something with compulsion. Something ordinary, you'll have to use an ordinary auxiliary. You've got to understand. Last, replace the underlined words by an auxiliary. Sometimes they give you a sentence. They say, I am able to cook. I am able, underlined, replace it with an uh, auxiliary. So I can cook. I am able to, you pick those words out, in that place you prove the modal auxiliary can. Okay, now when you do it, we have to do, to do this, we have to know two things. You must know the list of auxiliaries. Second, you must know what are the different functions of auxiliaries. Now come up. Now let's take can. I can swim. Now just look at this. I can swim shows ability. You have the ability to swim. Can I borrow your car for a day? Now the same word can used in two different sentences to make to mean two different things. First one it is ability. Second one you see it's in the form of a question. You are asking permission. Can I borrow your car for today? So the word can, the modal auxiliary can has two different functions here. One is ability. Second one is permission. Okay, we take the word could, modal auxiliary could. Now you will see one, two, three, four, five arrows. Let's see. Could you help me carry this box? It's a polite request. We could go to SL World for a picnic. Now this is a suggestion. You're suggesting, suggesting to someone. Next, see the third one. I could drive a car when I was in college. Now this, my dear children, is past stability. And could... I would drive, you can replace it with in this case, I would drive a car when I was in college. That also means past. Could I speak to the officer for a minute? Once again, this is permission. And last, during the monsoon, the sea could be a dangerous place to swim. Now here you mean to say that sea, there is a possibility for the sea to be dangerous for you. You can't go swimming. Let's quick have a quick look. Could as one word, can had two functions. Could as a modal auxiliary has got one, two, three, four, five functions. Now don't break your head thinking, how am I going to learn it by heart? All that is needed, my dear children, to understand the sentence. How is this word used? Is this word asking used to ask permission? Does it suggest something? Is it ability? Or are you asking permission? Or is it talking of possibility? And if you concentrate on the sentence, especially if you're used to talking in English, things become easy and you'll be able to pick out the function. But those of you who think it's going to be really difficult, definitely can make a study of all these possibilities. And once it is there in your mind, you can place it exactly, this good is for this. Right, now we take the third one, may. Look at this, now there are four functions. You see the four arrows. We may have a holiday tomorrow. So you don't know. You're not very sure, but there is a possibility. See, the second one is a question. May I leave early? So it is permission. Third one, sometimes you need to bless people. May God bless you, we say. Oh God, may, 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 may you be blessed abundantly, we say. It's a prayer. It's a wish. You bless someone, and sometimes you curse someone. May you not get any help at all. Now you're wishing someone something bad, a curse. Last one. May I help you lay the table? This is your offering help to someone. So may has got four functions. Three P's and one O. You can remember like that. P, 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 P and O. 
Next, we have got might. Might, may and might are a pair. They are a pair. Um, past tense of may is referred to as might. So in indirect speech, direct speech, he said that he might go for the seminar. Past tense of may, indirect speech. And see the second one. This is a remote possibility. Same word, very word. I might go to London next week. You are not very sure whether you are going to London. But you think of a possibility. It is next week. So you say, I might go to London next week. See the clear difference. Again, once again, nothing to learn by heart. He said that he might go for the seminar. It's a past tense. He may go, might go. Okay. Next, will. He will go to the market tomorrow. You will see here. Will you help me with my homework? I will not listen to what he says. You will see three arrows here. First one is a pure future tense. He will go to the market tomorrow. Second one, request. Sometimes you do ask, will you be able to help me with some work? Here you say, will you help me with my homework? So it's a polite request. Last one, I will not listen to what he says. And I think you have a way of saying it. I will not stand any nonsense. So here it shows determination, willingness. I'm either going to do it or I'm not going to do it. So three functions for will. Next one, would. Here, yeah. one, two, three, four arrows. So naturally, we have got four functions. We'll have a quick look at it. He would go to the gym every evening. Now, you are talking about someone's daily habit. Every evening, he would go to the gym. And so see the, what the function is. Habitual action in the past. Would you lend me something? Now, again, polite request. You must have come across this many times. Can, may will. These are all polite requests. Could also polite request. Could you please help me? See here also, would you lend me something is also polite request. Next, Otto would probably shake my hand. Now, I think you. Uh, this comes in that lesson, uh, Anne Frank. Otto is the, is Anne Frank's dad. Otto would probably, now you are not sure whether he would shake hands with you, but you are thinking of a possibility. Last one, she told him that she would like to become his letter daughter. In this case, she will like to become, she would like to become. It is the past, ten, past time of will or past tense of will. So we have got four functions of would, habitual action, polite request, possibility, past action. So you can say past time of past tense of will. So again, three P's here and one H here. Shall has got three functions, three arrows. Now let's go through them clearly. They shall be punished for their wrongdoing. Now you are talking about a kind of a threat. Oh, they did that. They shall be punished. So it's a kind of a threat. Second, you shall not go to gym every evening. Now you are preventing someone from going. You shall not drink that water now. You will drink it only after you finish that answer. Okay, third, shall we go for a picnic this weekend? The very word shall give three different moods. Just see, first is threat, second is prohibiting someone, banning someone, third is shall we go for a picnic? Lovely suggestion. So see the very, see the magic of this word, shall, shall and shall. This actually, my dear children, see this is a helping verb, but it tells the mood of the verb. That is why modal auxiliary with three different functions. Okay, now we come to should. Of course, you know one of them. Should is advice. And second is, obviously, you now see the first sentence. You should help the poor. It's a kind of an obligation. There is no written rule. Government doesn't say if you don't help the poor, you'll be punished, you'll be put in jail. So see, there is no compulsion. If you don't help the poor, you will fail in the exam. Nothing like that. But your heart says that. A kind of obligation. I think I must do that. Poor people suffering. I should. You should obligation. Next, you should practice regularly. You are advising someone. So your suggestion come, advice. You should practice regularly means suggest and advise. Last, now see condition. If it should rain, then they will not go out. If it should rain, we are not going out for the picnic. If you should tell a lie, I will never again trust you. So you are putting a condition saying, of course the condition comes with the word if but you are using the word should.
to put that condition. Right, now we come to must. Of course, I'm sure all of you know must is compulsion. But not always. Just look at the three functions now. See, first one is we must respect all religions. Our constitution says so. Must respect, must do this. It's a kind of obligation. Second, just see the word. She must have forgotten. Forgotten is a main verb and you've used the word must have. Here it is conjecture or guess we say. What is conjecture? Conjecture, actually the word comes there, guess. She, you do not know, you are not sure whether he has forgotten the keys. So you say she must have forgotten the keys. Supposing one of your friends is absent in class, so you say, oh, he must have fallen sick. He had ice cream yesterday. Or he must have bunked the class and gone for a movie. Or he must have told a lie. Now you are guessing. You are not very sure at all. So in this case, along with must, you need to use the word have to make it into that function of conjecture or guess. Last, you must reach the office in time. Here the difference is from the first and the second. In the first one, must respect all religions is a kind of obligation for all Indians or for that matter for all the people of the world. His religion, I must respect. In the last one, you must reach the office in time. You know what happens. If you don't reach the office in time, the result is punishment or half day cut or something like that. So here it is compulsion. So I think you know the difference now between compulsion and obligation. With compulsion failing which, you have a kind of automatic punishment. <coughs> Last. Of course, we finished all with may or those. Now we come to ought to. Of course, this is not the last. But ought to here refers to, as you can see, it's almost like must. But it is used as almost. I said, I ought to complete my work. I must complete my work. But that amount, that the factor of punishment disappears. We ought to look after our old parents. Supposing you don't look after your old parents, society will say, what a, what a cruel person you are. You, your mom is sick and you're going for a movie. You know, no obligation. You Something tells you deep inside, oh, poor old parents, I must look after them. Mom is not well, I must help her. I to help her out at home. Your friend needs help, I ought to help her. So this is moral obligation. In other words, so far we did obligation. Moral is if you don't do it, you feel guilty. It's a kind of something wrong that you are doing it. So we say moral obligation. Second one, they ought to win the game today. Now, you are, they're going to have a game today. You're thinking, oh, if they don't win the game, gone. The Indian team has to win. Otherwise, I will not be able to tolerate. So you're thinking of a probability. They must win. They ought to win the game today. So you see the difference? One is more moral obligation, if you don't do it guilty, and the second one is probability. Next. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier with you, would. Would and used to are actually like twins. Would is past action. Used to is also past action. action. Here you see the sentence, they used to play cricket every evening. And see the next sentence. There used to be a hotel at the corner of the street. See the first function. They used to play cricket every evening. Is actually something that has been happening all along. Used to, but it is past action. It is not, it need not be, it's not happening now. Past habit, they used to play. Uh, can be replaced also with would. Now this kind of questions also do come for the exam. They'll give you the modal auxiliary used to, replace with a similar modal auxiliary, where you'll remove used to, and you can write, they would play cricket every evening. Both mean the same. You take one, replace it with the other. Look at this second sentence. There used to be a hotel at the corner of the street. Now, you are thinking of something of the past, existence of something in the past. This again actually refers to past, but it's not a habit. Something used to be there, now it is not there. So see the word used to refers to this particular past habit, past existence. We now come to the word need. You remember them? Can, could, will, would, shall, should, may, might. 
must ought to use to need dead. The last two. Here if you see the word, he need not pay the money right away. Need he pay the money right away in a question form. I think you remember the word need. You can easily add ing, needing. So he is needing it. Sometimes need, needing. He needed it. So it can be changed into present, past, future. So need by itself is not a modal auxiliary. Becomes a modal auxiliary only if you put the negative word not. Or if you use it in the form of a question. So in the first sentence, he need not pay the money right away. So which is actually the main verb here, pay. But need not tells you he must pay the money right away. He may pay the money right away. He need not pay the money right away. See how it takes the place? Need not. So it is negation. Negation means negative. So it is out of necessity. Need he pay the money right away is a question. So we often, we normally don't use it very often, but it's a kind of putting it. Need he pay the money right away? It's in the form of a question. So the main verb is pay. Need becomes a modal auxiliary. But this is, if it is a question, we need not use it in a negative form. I hope the two examples are very clear. Last one is dead. Now you can clearly see the two arrows here. One is courage, other one is challenge. Of course, dare always means, I dare not do it. You dare come close to me, things like this. How dare you touch my pad? You're asking a question to someone. So when it's a question form, we again, just like need, we don't use the negative. How dare you do it? How dare you go out without my permission? So dare, actually the main verb is touch, go. So dare is a modal auxiliary, without not, in a question. Second one, you dare not contradict me. You dare not shout. You dare not leave the house. So these are orders. Main verb is contradict, leave, shout. But in this case, not has to be added. You are challenging the person. You dare not leave. In other words, it means when you challenge, if you do, something will follow. The result is going to be very drastic. So these are the two ways we are going to use this word dare in modal auxiliary. Right. I think now everything is clear to you. Of course, you need practice children, as I said in the beginning. When teacher explains, you find something easy. Maybe you have understood. Not understood, we can go back to that again. But whether you have understood or not, we find out by an easy method. We give you a question and now you solve it. If you are able to solve it, you have understood. So we take the first sentence. Fill in the blanks with correct modal auxiliaries. You dash be func punctual. Now since you all are beginning with, beginners with modal auxiliaries, to assist you, we give you a choice. So choice is given. Sometimes choice is given. Sometimes hint is given in brackets, function is given. Or sometimes something or the other is suggested so that you get the right answer. So you see here, you dash be punctual, a kind of obligation. So I can't see, actually if you see, you will be punctual, you shall be punctual, you must be punctual, you ought to be punctual, law, all of them. But since the hint is given, you choose the right one. Since it's obligation to say you should be punctual, you ought to be punctual. Second, dash, you please help me with this. Now this is a request. What word are we going to use? Since it is please, it is a polite request. Now we have many choices. I can say, could you please help me with this? Or would you please help me with this? And will you please help me with this? Why not possibility? If it was given possibility, can you help me with this? It's a question. Of course, it's a request. But if it is a request, you have to use the word please. You want that person's help. So that is why please or could you please is added to make it a request. Right. I think he dash come next week. Remote possibility. Anyone remembers? So the answer is might. I think he might come next week. Fourth. He dash passed the examination easily. Probability. So what do we use for this? He ought to pass the examination easily. Remember that cricket game? We ought to win that particular game today. So probability, you want it to happen, ought to. Last, he dash watch a movie every Saturday 
before he got married. Now here it is past habit. Past habit? What was he using or doing? So it should be would or used to. Any one of them, you have a choice. He would watch a movie every Saturday before he got married. He used to watch a movie every Saturday before he got married. But now that he's married, maybe he's watching every day or maybe he's not watching at all. But this is referring to past habit. Right. Second type of question is identify the modal auxiliary and write what they denote. Now in this sentence, we used to breathe. Now that you're familiar with the modal auxiliaries, you can read the sentence and definitely you'll tell me, ma'am, it is used to, the word. We used to breathe well because we worked hard. Now what is your job? Identify means what? You've got to underline. You've got to pick it up. You've got to take it and write it down. So see the answer how it is written? You pick out used to from there and place it down or write it down. Used to. We used to breathe well because we worked hard. This refers to past action. So you can write used to. Can I write would there? I cannot because they have not mentioned the word would. Now you'll pick out only the given word and write it. I hope you get it. Second, you should try plastic surgery. I know you're smart enough. Immediately you'll say, you'll say it is should. Now you are suggesting to someone better to have plastic surgery. So should stands for suggestion. Uh, you may go. May. Permission. See the fourth one. We must master the art of breathing. Here, I think that lesson you've got. If you don't know how to breathe properly, you're definitely going to have some problems. When you do that lesson on breathing later on, you will realize wrong breathing causes so many problems. That is why the word must. Compulsion. We must master. Otherwise, I told you, if you don't do that, adverse results, you'll be punished by having different types of diseases. So compulsion. They would watch a movie every Saturday. Now, this is almost similar to the first one, where we are referring to the past habit. So which is the modal auxiliary students? Would. And it is habitual action. In this case, they would watch a movie every Saturday. Again, habitual action, past action. Okay. These are suggestions for you. If you go to the textbook, these are the different pages. Page 22, page 29, page 111, page 163, and page 181. Each of these pages tackles this problem clearly with examples and with an exercise that follows, telling you how to make use of it and what kind of questions can come for the exam. Please take down the page numbers. Make a study of it, see that you do every exercise and find the difference. Difference between usage of one word and another word. Third type is identify the modal auxiliary, write what they denote. We children would stare at her, same. I could hardly see a handful of people. I could, but past ability. They used to be considered as omens again past recurrent event. Again, could is used in another way. Possibility. The forest could be a disappointing place to watch birds. Last, you may see many species of birds. May is possibility. I think all that you need to do is today when you go home or on the way when you talk to friends, first of all speak in English all the time, 24-7. As you use either find out which modal auxiliaries am I using after speaking, you can rec uh, identify, recognize, or try using this when you talk. I could come tomorrow, tell your friend, I could help you with that sum tomorrow. I may be able to go for that movie with you tomorrow. We would, when we were small, we would climb trees and we would jump down. We would do this, we would do that. See, past ability, I could hardly see a handful of people in the classes. Now it is not so. So start using it. And then only automatically practice will come. Then with the different exercises, you will be able to use them most effectively. Because normally students ask, ma'am, how to practice this, how to do it? Two ways are there. Of course, language consists of four stages. Listening, speaking, reading and writing. Today, you listen to all that I explained in modal auxiliaries. At the same time, you saw it. Second is speaking. So when you speak to your friends, use modal auxiliaries. Your friend uses a modal auxiliaries, immediately sense it. And when you say it also, you sense it. That awareness is needed. 
You just go on speaking anything, it will not help. So awareness, see look, you used a modal auxiliary, I used a modal auxiliary, and then you find out which function did it denote. And third one, listening, speaking, reading. Now reading you did along with this, no problem. Last one is writing. Writing, you need to take exercise from the book and practice. So see the sentences that are coming up? May the star never set. You're wishing someone. May. Our next thought must be of the unknown volunteers. Now must be. Here must. Must is the modal auxiliary. Be is the verb. Compulsion. They might be good for your skin. You're suggesting a possibility. Maybe if you use this, ultimately it will improve your skin. I can't go up. Now can't is a negative modal auxiliary. I cannot go up on stage with this on my chin. So can't shows, can becomes ability, can't becomes negative, in ability. Last tenth one, he must have seen, moment you see, have with must, you know one thing. Tell yourself clearly, moment you I use have with must, it is a guess. He must have seen the look of bewilderment on my face. You come to the bus stand, bus has gone. The bus must have left. You don't know whether the bus has come. You don't know whether, whether the bus is yet to come. But you're just guessing. So it is a guess. Right. Fine. Uh, I will not... Uh, this is a... We've got a fine uh, song here. The Jab We Met. Uh, but I think... Uh, you know that song, I think. But I'm not going to sing it right now. Ha, hai, hai, koi... To vajay, you know that song, so you can put these words and you can have a fine practice in case you feel like and you can remember all the modal auxiliaries mentioned here. Grammar, modal, auxiliaries, functions, sorry. Have, has, may, will, can, need, might, may, should, ought to, do, would. Fine children, I think this is a funny way, interesting way of putting it in the form of a song. Otherwise, as you talk to your friends, just use this. As you write down, practicing the exercise in the, uh, from the Mah Mahesh notes, just try to put, this is what she said, am I getting it? Say that sentence to yourself, put it in the suitable place. I hope you have understood children and I wish you all the best with modal auxiliaries. Use modal auxiliaries as often as possible. Have a fine day. Thank you.